Kristen here and I want to take a few minutes this won't be a very long video I thought I would talk about six things ambulatory wheelchair users wish society would know about ambulatory wheelchair using I know there have been a lot of comments on my two wheelchair videos about the freedom that's provided with using a wheelchair when you need a mobility aid and I'm getting ready for a trip to Boston. So in my preparation for that, this came to mind and I thought it would be a great thing to discuss. Coming off of the month of May, which is Ellers Danlos Awareness Month, I didn't want to just drop the trend of talking about Ellers Danlos Syndrome. So here we are back again, and we're going to discuss these six things just briefly. And this list is not comprehensive, so I would very much like to hear from you guys what else goes in this list. What does society need to know about ambulatory wheelchair using? And what is the best route to getting people educated? I know that YouTube is a great place, social media platforms are a great place, but what's the blockade or the thing that keeps people from being better in the know about how to understand us and be more compassionate, kind, understanding, less judgmental, less critical, less downright mean. You guys have experienced some of these things. I'd like to hear your stories below if you want to leave them in the chat or the comment section. And as always, we will engage and spread some awareness. Before I even mention it, we're actually in my office, so that's the background that you're seeing here. So I thought I would just hang out with you guys here since I had a few moments between clients. The first thing on our list is our wheelchairs don't define us. Obviously, they don't define us because we don't spend all of our lives in it. And even if we did, they wouldn't be defining of who we are as a person or people. So being a wheelchair user doesn't mean that has to do with our identity. Clearly, it has a lot to do with how we express our identity, how we are able to get around in life and have a quality of life to make sure that we don't miss out on so many things that we spend the majority of our days in bed or confined to our home, if it's ADA accessible even. A lot of times homes are not, so we make do and we do what we need to do to get around. The second thing on the list, the first one's clearly very brief and kind of succinct and understood. The second one is using a wheelchair does not mean we're giving in. And as you guys know from my other two wheelchair videos, this is kind of where I live mentally is that I feel like I've kind of given in when I sit down in that chair and I go, okay, I have to use this. So it can be difficult for some people who have to get over their pride right here that using your wheelchair mobility aid is not giving in. It's actually living in wellness or moving toward wellness and providing yourself with self-care and a, qual a better quality of life. So you're not giving in. You're just using what tools you need to do the job. If you were a runner on a track, wouldn't you wear the special little track cleats? Yes, you would because it helps you have that edge and do your best. Part of using a wheelchair has to do with us being equipped to handle life. When I go to Boston or when I travel abroad, overseas or domestically, I almost always exclusively take my wheelchair. Whether I know if I'm gonna need it or not, my best guess is I will need it because if I don't take it, it limits my day. Then I can only explore and live my day to the extent that my body will allow me to, energy, stamina, weakness, or strength-wise, and a lot of times that's not even half a day. And if there's heat involved, I'm done, and there's nothing I can do about it. I can push myself, and sometimes that gets me a little more time in that day, but that usually means that it's borrowed from the next day, and I've sabotaged myself. So we have to avoid self-sabotage and stop thinking of ourselves as giving in, but rather than rather using the resources we have available. Number three, we are still disabled even if we can walk sometimes. 
being in a wheelchair doesn't mean you cannot walk. I'm not sure where this came from, and I don't know why society by and large in America, I can't speak for any other country, but in America we think people in wheelchairs can't walk. If you can walk, what are you doing in a wheelchair? It's offensive, it's ignorant, it's a lack of education, I think. People tend to do better when they know better, not all people, but people tend to want to do better when they know better. So we have to spread awareness. That's part of our advocacy for ourselves and our community is to get the word out there by sharing it. And it's a hard thing to talk about. People are uncomfortable. A lot of times people are uncomfortable with other people in a wheelchair. That's not the wheelchair user's problem. That's the person experiencing the discomfort because of the wheelchair. Can you guys tell me other places that are ADA compliant? There is nothing more frustrating than wanting to go to another restaurant or a place to shop and there's no curb cuts. Stairs only or one step up even. It is so hard to get up one step with your wheelchair. For me, my arms are like little noodle arms, clearly. Little noodle arms cannot push my manual wheelchair up a single step. It's very difficult. And even the inclines, I will tell you the last time I was in, where was I in? Colorado. I was in Denver and we were going to this, um, we were going to this ramen shop and the entry to it was up a ramp, a wheelchair ramp, clearly built for power wheelchairs because I had to have my friend who was with me push me up. I could not power myself up this ramp. It was absurd. And the more I used my wheelchair in Denver, the more I realized the minimal ability for people in wheelchairs all the time to get around. If I were able, I could get out of my chair and pick it up the one step, but then you have people looking at you like, oh, she walked. It's a miracle because only people who can't walk use wheelchairs. It's absurd. The fourth one goes along with what I was just talking about being that wheelchairs give freedom. People with health issues that require wheelchair use, ambulatory wheelchair use, it gives you freedom. That's what I've heard more and more in the comment sections of my videos is the freedom aspect, providing quality of life to you and those who you wanna interact with, your loved ones, your support systems, your friends, your family, your loved ones, and new people you've not even met yet may miss out on opportunities to be with you because you can't participate. So wheelchairs do give freedom. The fifth thing on the list is only using wheelchairs some days does not equal never needing one. Just because you don't need a wheelchair on Tuesday but you do on Thursday and Friday doesn't mean you're faking it, doesn't mean that you don't need it, and it doesn't even mean that you didn't really push through on Wednesday and should have been using it to begin with. And had you used it before, you might not need it as much because we do tend to push ourselves until it's too late and you've got further issues and it impacts your quality of living. I can't say enough about the self-care level of quality of living that chronic illness people miss out on because of society, judgment, lack of support, ignorance, all of those things. And the reality that a little bit of support goes a long way acceptance, validation, affirmation, all of those things. And don't get me started on the medical team that should be supporting us, that we often have to beg to understand our circumstance or to read an article or to do their own homework or to just really understand our illness rather than the tiny little picture that was in their medical textbooks. That's another video. That's also a soapbox of mine, so we'll go there. But not using your wheelchair on a Monday or a Sunday or a Wednesday afternoon when you use it all morning, but now you don't need it. Yay, that should be a celebration moment. I feel good enough today not to use my wheelchair, not that it's superior to wheelchair use, but it's a positive to be able to feel like you can do more with your body when your body allows it. Lastly, many people use different mobility aids depending on the day. So for people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, they may, use, they may use canes, braces, walkers, the, I can't think of the name of them. They're like walkers with wheels on them where they have a seat. Roll us something. 
Rollators. Is that the name? Rollators. They use those. People use wheelchairs. Um, I'm probably missing some mobility aids. I'd love to hear it. If you want to pop down there and give me a list of your favorite mobility aids, that'd be cool. Maybe we could all benefit from that list. Maybe there's something on there that somebody could really use to increase their quality of life that they don't know about. So those things all fall into the mobility aid use, which doesn't mean that we don't need a wheelchair if we use a cane or a walker or a rollator or crutches. Ooh, smart crutches. That's another one. Mm, and braces. Just because we wear braces doesn't mean that we don't need a wheelchair sometimes. So we're going to wrap it up and I will see you right here next time. Bye. Thank you.